good morning to all of you. Today's topic is polyamides. Coming to introduction, polyviruses cause a highly infectious childhood disease called polio or polyamides, causing acute flaccid paralysis. That is involvement of the central nervous system. And polio is in the verge of eradication globally. So this is the morphology of the polyvirus. Here, the polyvirus is a positive sense linear single stand RNA. And it is 28 to 30 nanometers in size. It is non-enveloped virus. And this polyvirus is spherical in shape. It has a hypoxahedral symmetry. And this polyvirus has, has a capsid. It's composed of 60 subunits. And each consisting of four viral proteins. That is viral protein 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then coming to the antigenic type of polyviruses. So here, the polyviruses are classified into wild polyviruses and vaccine-derived polyviruses. So wild polyviruses, it cause natural disease, whereas uh, vaccine-derived polyviruses, they are the vaccine stains that have regained their neurovirulence and they are capable of producing the disease in the man. So the antigenic types, it is of two. Coming to the wild poliviruses. So, in brief, got three wild polyvirus strains. Wild polyvirus 1, 2, and 3. All these three strains they are identical and they produce a similar clinical manifestations and the severity of illness. In all these three strains, they are looks identical and they also produce a similar clinical features and also they are similar in the severity of illness. And they are genetically and immunologically different. Then viral protein 1 BG. So they produce a similar clinical features and severity of illness also the same and they are identical. But genetic wise and immunological wise, they are different in their viral protein 1 BG. In wild polyoviruses, the antibody response is type specific and it is not cross protective. Currently, all the natural cases they are caused by wild polyviruses 1. So, both wild polyviruses 2 and 3 they are globally eradicated in the year 1999 and 2019, respectively. So, coming to vaccine derived polyviruses, here there occurs a genetic change, mutation occurs. So, that again they regain, regain the neurovirulences. This vaccine derived polyviruses they can cause paralytic poliomyelitis. Coming to the pathogenesis. So, the poliovirus, poliomyelitis uh, caused by the poliviruses are transmitted by fecal oral route. Here, first, the virus entry into the host cells via the receptors present in the host cell surface. It is called as CD155 receptors. This virus is entered into the host cells by binding to this attached to this CD155 receptors present on the host cell surfaces. Then it enters into the human body. They multiply locally in the intestinal epithelial cells, submucosal lymphoid tissue of tonsils and pears patches. So here, this polyviruses they spreads to central nervous system and the spinal cord via to this pathogenesis. First, occurs by hemorrhaginous spread. First, the virus spreads to the regional lymph nodes. Then, it spills to the bloodstream, causing primary viremia. Then, multiplication takes place in the reticuloendothelial system. It enters the bloodstream again, causing secondary viremia. And then, from secondary viremia, it is carried to the spinal cord and brain. So, this is the pathogenesis flowchart. So, first, it causes primary viremia, then multiplication occurs in the reticulatory system, then causing secondary viremia. Further, it spreads to the brain and spinal cord. Then, the site of action in the motor nerve ending, that is anterior horn cells of the spinal cord, it leads to muscle weakness and placid paralysis. So, neural spread can also occur following the Tonsillectomy. Following tonsillectomy surgery, 
where the virus is weak, spreads via the loss of pharyngeal nerve. This nerve is present in the tonsillar fossa. That by neural spreads can occur. So the earliest change that takes place in neuron is the neuron degeneration. So there occurs a degeneration of missile body. Missile body means it is the aggregated ribosomes normally found in the cytoplasm of the neuron. So it is called as missile bodies. There only neuron degeneration takes place. And here the pathological changes are always more extensive than the distribution of the paralysis. In coming to clinical manifestation, uh, incubation period is about 7 to 14 days. It's average being 7 to 14 days. The manifestation, it just starts from asymptomatic stage to the severe paralytic stage. So asymptomatic cases, they are called as inapparent infection. So 91.96% of the cases will be asymptomatic. Minor illnesses manifested by fever, malaise, sore throat, anorexia, myalgia, and the headache. They are called as aborting infection, accounts for 5% of the cases. Then, aseptic meningitis, called as non paralytic poliomyelitis, occurs in 1% of the cases. Then, about paralytic poliomyelitis, it is less than 1%, it is least common form. It is characterized by descending asymmetric acute fracid paralysis, called as AFP. Here, the manifestations will be the proximal muscles that are affected first, and the distal muscles where the paralysis starts at the hip region, then proceeds towards the extremities, leads to the characteristic tripod sign. It means first the child sits with the fixed, fixed hip, and both the arms are extended towards the back for the support. So this is called as tripod sign. So paralytic poliomyelitis, the site of involvement, it can be a spinal, can be a bulbospinal, or can be a bulbar. So in biphasic course, in children with aseptic meningitis occurs first, followed by recovery phase, and then there is return of the fever with paralytic features one to two days later. Pale nerve involvement seen, but there is no sensory loss in case of paralytic poliomyelitis. These are the risk factors like older children, adults, pregnant women, heavy muscle exercise, persons undergoing trauma at the time of central nervous system symptoms. Then tonsillectomy that is predisposed to bulbar poliomyelitis. Intramuscular injections increase risk of paralysis in the involved limb. In coming to the laboratory diagnosis of poliomyelitis, various specimens to be collected is throat swab at 3 weeks and rectal swab or stool samples at 12 weeks. Then, CWARTS testing is done where the polioviruses, wild or vaccine viruses, under the polio eradication program, it is taken place. Then we can isolate the viruses in the cell line for that primary monkey kidney cell line is used. Here, the viral group is generated by the cytopathic effect and viral antigen or viral gene in cell line can be detected. Then antibody detection can be done by neutralization test. Molecular methods are also performed by using real-time multiplex RT-PCR, getting the viral protein one region. Then coming to the difference between the vaccines, between the injectable and the oral polio vaccines. So injectable polio vaccines are called as SAL and the oral polio vaccines are called as SABIN. So these are the formulation. So injectable polio virus contains uh, three serotypes, one, two, and three, it can be given in two doses. Full dose of injectable polio vaccines and a fractional dose is given. According to the National Immunization Schedule India 2020, two fractional doses given at 6th, 14th week of age along with bivalent oral polio vaccines and it is given intradermal group at upper arm at dose of 0.1 ml. And it is literally safer than the oral polio 
polyvaccine. Coming to the efficacy of injectable polyvaccine salt, efficacy is about 80 to 90 percentage by full course of injectable polio vaccine. Immune response is lower than oral polio vaccine and is relatively expensive and duration of production is also very short. It needs boost to dose periodically. Uh, in epidemic uh, situation can precipitate the paralysis and it does not provide your immunity. Also, it weakly stimulates the local immunity. Then coming to oral polio vaccine, it is called as Sabin vaccine. It is available as three forms, trivalent oral polio vaccine, bivalent oral polio vaccine, monovalent oral polio vaccine. In trivalent polio, oral polio vaccine contains serotypes 1, 2 and 3. Bivalent oral polio vaccine contains serotype 1 and 3. Monovalent oral polio vaccine contains only one serotype. So according to national immunization schedule in India 2020, total five doses are given. Two drops per dose orally is given of bivalent oral polio vaccine contains serotype 1 and 3. So zero dose is given at birth. First, second and the third dose given at 6th, 10th and the 14th, 14th week of the age and booster dose is given at 16 to 24 months and it's safe except the conditions like pregnancy, old age and the immunocompromised patient. Then in efficacy wise, it is 90 to 100 percentage efficacy is achieved even by one or two doses of oral polio vaccine and efficacy can be decreased by interference by other enteroviruses uh, by diarrheal disease and breastfeeding. It is less expensive and the duration of production is long lasting. The epidemic condition can be used safely and herd immunity is provided by pecoral spread of vaccine viruses and it strongly stimulates the local immunity by production of Ig antibody. So salt vaccine, it can prevent only the paralysis and we have to store it does not require astringent storage condition. It's really stable. And the complications like vaccine associated paralytic poly poliomyelitis and vaccine derived uh, infection is of zero chance. Whereas in Sabin vaccine, the paralysis and intestinal reinfection can be prevented. And here, the storage condition it is stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius and should be stabilized in the magnesium chloride and pH should be less than 7 and also uh, the complications there are no chance. So here the first picture tells that inner square region is white and the outer circle it is blue in color so that in this case vaccine can be used and second one also the inner square region is white and the outer circle is blue. In this case also vaccine can be used. And the third one, the inner square region is blue in color and also similar to the color there is a outer circular region. In this case it should not use the vaccine. In fourth picture, inner square region is darkly blue and the outer circular region is in light blue. In this case also the vaccine should be discarded should be given to the children. So in vaccine associated paralytic poliomyelitis, all the cases of paralytic poliomyelitis occurs following oral polio vaccine administration only. Vaccine associated paralytic poliomyelitis strains or oral polio vaccine like isolates which show a limited genetic divergence from the parental oral polio vaccine strains that is less than one percentage can occur among the oral polio vaccine recipients as well as their close contact due to thick oral spread. It is not capable of circulating in the community and also do not cause any outbreak. Most common serotype associated with this vaccine associated paralytic poliomyelitis is Sabin type 3. So it accounts for 60 percentage followed by Sabin type 2 it accounts for 40 percentage. In vaccine derived polioviruses, 
the live attributed vaccine strains present in oral polio vaccine they undergo the genetic changes to become the vaccine derived polio viruses the vaccine derived polio viruses is capable of producing polymyelitis they are clinically cannot be differentiated they are indistinguishable from the wild polio viruses because due to the regain of the neurovirulence three types of vaccine derived polio viruses they are recognized out of which circulating vaccine derived polio viruses they are most common type other two varieties of immunodeficiency associated vaccine derived polio viruses and ambiguous vaccine derived polio viruses this vaccine derived polio viruses strains they can circulate in the community they spread person to person by fecal oral transmission and can cause outbreaks they pose the same threat to the community as that of wild polio viruses in vaccine derived polio viruses generally di divergence is more than 1 percentage is more than the strain that causes the vaccine associated polio paralytic polio myelitis the occurrence of community vaccine derived polio myelitis viruses cases are more common than the vaccine associated paralytic polio myelitis as it can spread in the community since 2000 community vaccine derived polio myelitis viruses outbreaks have occurred in several countries including non endemic countries which are already declared eradicated 90% of community acquired vaccine derived polio viruses cases are due to the type 2 followed by type 1 So coming to the epidemiology, here the reservoir is the man. Clinical and subclinical ratio for every clinical cases there may be thousand children and seventy five adults of subclinical cases. There are no chronic carriers except immunodeficient individuals. The source is from stool and the oropharyngeal secretions. Age wise, younger children and infants they are more susceptible than the adult. The period of communicability is These viruses they shed in the feces from seven to ten days before the onset of symptoms, up to two to three weeks, and sometimes for three to four months. And then coming to polio eradication, polio myelitis is on the verge of eradication globally, and the extensive immunization program is being conducted globally. That is, we are conducting pulse polio immunization. It was initiated globally to eradicate the polio myelitis. In India, it was started since 1995 to 96. Here, two rounds of pulse polio immunization, six weeks apart, scheduled every year during the winter season. In children's of less than five years, we are vaccinated with oral polio viruses. Yet, pulse polio immunization doses of oral polio vaccine, considered as extra doses, have not replaced the oral polio vaccine doses received under the routine national immunization schedule. And also, acute present paralysis surveillance is also done. So, yet. Showing classification of countries based on their polio transmission status as of August 2020. So these are the endemic countries that ongoing ongoing transmission of indigenous wild polio viruses. Example: pan countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Nigeria. Outbreak countries: they stop indigenous wild polio viruses. What are experiencing a reinfection either by importation of wild polio viruses or Vaccine derived polio viruses from another country, or emergence and circulation of vaccine derived polio viruses. There are seventeen outbreak countries as of August twenty twenty. Stop these outbreaks. It is necessary to implement the outbreak response guidelines. The key to these countries: there are low level of immunity and surveillance leaves the countries at risk of polio returning. And there are twelve key at-risk countries as of August 2020. And polio-free countries, 
that there is no transmission of indigenous wild poliviruses. There is no wild case has been reported for more than equal to three years. India and the rest of 178 countries, they fall in these categories. So this is polio endgame strategy 2019 to 2023. Here it is introduced as an endgame strategy for polio eradication. It has three goals. Eradication of polio by 2023. Goal one, it's so eradication. In case of eradication, it's done by interrupting the transmission of all wild polio viruses. Stop all circulating vaccine derived polio viruses. Outbreaks within 120 days of reduction. And goal two is the integration. Here, there is a strengthening and immunization and health systems to help to achieve the polio eradication and polio virus surveillance through integration with comprehensive vaccine poliviruses and communicable disease surveillance system. Prepared for and response to future outbreaks and emergencies. Goal 3 is certification and containment. Certify the countries for eradication of wild poliviruses. Contain all poliviruses including from laboratories. Thank you for your 